the water first and then putting in the oatmeal didn't really help yesterday, so I'm just doing it my way. And I'll try to watch it so that it doesn't bubble over. starving. You know, I want to show you something. Have you guys noticed these things up here? So a little while ago we had these skylights installed. It makes it so much nicer in this house. There's another one right here. But look, this is almost like a, a real light. In fact, it's better than a real light. Look how crappy this light is. Look at this. Compared to that light. So this is this light's ability to light me, and this is the skylight's ability to light me. Nice, right? <laughs> In any case, it's lunchtime. So look who's in town. It's our buddy John T. And he's got a truck that has air-conditioned seats. And then, wait, where's the air come out? The seats were just a little bit hot. So we couldn't have that turn out there. Air conditioning. Oh, that's your exit. So we tried these out. Oh, I can feel it on my legs already. Thank you, John, for coming to visit. It was great times. I need to get to the studio and record a video. Uh, let's go. Okay, video shoot is complete. They're doing class back there. Just thought I'd test out the camera's dual stabilization. See what my mother's doing up here. Oh, it's <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, it's good there. Okay, I'll let's go. Have the interview go. Oh, one good. You know what's interesting is that one of the most consistent pieces of feedback that we've gotten for Adventure Archives, and also most surprising, is how relaxing the show is to people. That's just something I never expected, not because it's not relaxing, but because it's not something we intended to have happen when we made the episodes. So everybody knows the Mario Brothers theme, right? It's this. The composer of that is a guy named Koji Kondo. He made the music for the Mario Brothers series up until I think Super Mario Sunshine. When Super Mario Galaxy rolled around, a guy named Mahito Yokota took over composing duties, and he was interviewed about how that went. He said that initially it was really daunting because you had to compose for such an iconic series like Mario. And his first attempts at making the music, he tried to keep that same Latin style that Koji Kondo did in the original Mario Brothers. But when Koji Kondo listened to that music that he initially composed, the feedback that he gave him was that the music was too cutesy. Mario Brothers music was never meant to be cute. Koji Kondo explained to him that when he was initially writing the Mario Brothers theme song, he wasn't writing music that was supposed to be cute, he was writing music that he thought was cool. So when you hear that iconic song, he wasn't trying to make like a cute kids game song. He wrote music that he thought was cool. So to bring this full circle, when we made Adventure Archives and when we still make Adventure Archives, we don't have any particular like objective when we make it. We make things that we enjoy and the music that I write is music that I enjoy. I always come from a point of this excites me, this is awesome. It's not trying to pigeonhole it into something that I think people will want to watch. I make something I want to watch and just hope that there are other people who also want to watch it. And for those of you who have heard the Mario Galaxy soundtrack, you know that it is one of the best soundtracks 
ever written. After he got that feedback from Koji Kondo, he just wrote music that he thought was great. And that made the game's music fantastic. Up until that point, he was trying to make music that he thought would please his superior who had made the music before. But his superior was like, no, I'm handing this off to you. You gotta do what is you, whatever your music is is gonna be the right music for this game. But that's the funny thing, because from an outside perspective, maybe people think Mario's music is cute, but it's actually just to the creator, it's cool music. So to the same way, like, when people say that Adventure Archives is relaxing, I totally see that, and it is relaxing in a lot of ways. But to me, it's always just been what I thought is great. Like, not necessarily relaxing, not necessarily like exciting, just what really interests me and really excites me as a creator that's what Adventure Archives is to me. And then to each person, they take what they want out of it. But just on a general level, like that's something I very strongly believe in, is that if you wanna create something, or if you have a product, or whatever, it's like whatever you do in life, if you come from your center where it's like, this is what I'm about, this is what I'm good at, this is what I believe in, basically what I was talking about the other day with letting your light shine, the people who will resonate with that will find you, or you'll find them. Hopefully. But at the very least, as long as you're sticking true to what you really like to do, at least you think you're doing the right thing according to your own internal values, and you're actually enjoying the stuff that you're producing. That's my thought on that. Anyways, the episode is just about done. This is actually one of those times where it is almost done. It's very close. It'll be done today. Without a doubt. Wrong. Wrong. So, um, <clears throat> uh, what time is it? It's 6.20 p.m. Summer seems like it's here already because of daylight savings time. It's funny how when you sit there working at a computer, hours and hours can go by. Also, a quick side note, I see why Casey Neistat always zooms in, is because if you have a zoom lens, it makes it very easy to do. You can just go, oh, this is such a nice, cool shot. Like, it zooms in, make a point, blah, blah, blah. I'm already deathly afraid of copying him anyway, so I'm not gonna do that. There's two things I wanted to talk about. I wrote them on a piece of paper so that I wouldn't forget. Okay, so there's two things that completely define my life. The first one is a quote from The Simpsons that I have shared before. I'm a nerd. <gasps> so am I. And the next one is a song lyric by this guy named Michael Franti. One minute got you holding the nates, the next minute got you following your face. I had no idea this was the case, but I guess my mom planted a bunch of flowers last year, and they're all blooming now. Also, I doubt this comes as any surprise to anybody, but whenever I hear a piece of music, I always think about how it relates in a context of video. For example, that song that I did yesterday in the vlog. Whew, that's too much. That's from a game called Lost Odyssey. When I put that in, immediately what came to mind was a shot like this. And the other day I was watching YouTube and there was a recommended video. I didn't watch it, but it said, what's the difference between technique and musicality? When I was in high school or middle school, I can't remember which, I did a drum set solo for state solo contest. You know, you don't. And at the end, the judge was talking to me and he was trying to explain to me how to play something musically. And I just, I didn't get it at all then. But basically the part was like something where you just gradually got quiet even like, Whatever it was. But the way I played it was something like this. Just like, like a robot, basically. What he was trying to get across to me was that musicality 
is taking your technique, which is playing, and giving it emotion, giving it character, giving it life, not just rote playing the notes. But for instance, let's take that shot. Technique is knowing that for that first shot, you need a super long lens. When you know that, you know you can get that really long shot that's hyper compressed. It, it's like how they get that like long walking shot like in Armageddon where everybody's walking towards the camera. The dreams of an entire planet. And then for that second shot, knowing that you need to use a super big aperture so you can get that blurry background. But artistry, musicality, is knowing when to use that. Like knowing when to use it. That's the real key. Now, I'm not saying I know when to use things all the time. I'm just saying for that particular shot, I knew exactly what I wanted and I used my technique to get the artistry that I wanted out of it. That's like the perfect marriage of technology and function with creativity and artistry, if that makes any sense. My favorite band is the Reign of Kendo and they are amazing musicians. Like they can play like none other. But I think what they do really well is they make music to make good music. They don't make music to show off how proficient they are and how talented they are. And I don't really have a point to what I'm saying. I'm just saying that that's kind of what I aspire to in the things that I make. I try to make things that, I try to make things that are good without any knowledge about why they're good. Not any knowledge about what it took to make it good. There's always that extra layer of appreciation if you know what it took to make something good. But if you just like see that finished product and it's complete and it's great, then I've done a good job at whatever I've been creating. Okay, it's time for a run. It is a perfect day outside today. I've spent most of it indoors. So, the smell of a rose. you know, actually another point I'm trying to make is that rules are okay to be broken, but there's a reason that there are rules. It's so that you have like a baseline. So for that last shot, I turned the shutter speed up. People always talk about this thing called the 180 degree shutter that gives natural motion blur, which is what it's set to right now. So like my hands it had that motion blur or whatever. But you can turn up the shutter speed so it looks like that. I've talked about that in a previous vlog. The reason why you would stick to the 180 degree rule and have that natural motion blur all the time is so that when you do go to motion like this, it makes it more striking because you don't use it all the time. It's kind of like hiding go seek, you know? Like when you hide, it's fun to seek, and when you seek, it's fun to hide. Take me to the edge of the world. Take me to the place where you keep your pearls. Take me to the edge of the sky. Take me to the place where the blood runs dry. Yesterday, me and John T were watching James Brown dance. What James Brown does is he lets like the feeling that comes out when you're dancing, but it's just completely raw. It has no dance move whatsoever. It's just. Take me to the edge of the world. Take me to the place where you keep your pearls. Take I'm actually not knocking James Brown. I think he's awesome. And nobody can do that style of dance like he does. <laughs> but the reason I bring it up is because I was dancing just now and it was like the the dancing you do when nobody's looking and you're in a dark room <laughs> let me tell you that is the best feeling in the world but it's probably some of the worst looking dancing from an objective standpoint in the world all those good moves you learn in zoom and stuff those are out the window and you just jump like a kid <laughs> That's gonna do it for today's vlog. Thank you for watching. See you tomorrow.